SwiftUI's clickers serve multiple purposes for layouts, and exactly how they appear on screen depends on which device you're using, as well as which context you're using them in. Now in this program, we've got a form asking users to enter in how much their check came to. And we want to add a picker saying how many people were paying, so we can split the check. Now pickers like text fields need a two-way binding to store what their current value is. We already have an at state property over here to track number of people. So our next job is to loop over all the numbers from two through 99, a massive maximum, and show them all inside a picker. So here in our first section, let's go ahead and add a picker inside here. We'll do picker, number of people, bound to a selection value of dollar number of people. Then inside there, we're gonna loop over with for each. And for each can take ranges. So I'll say the range is two up to 100. So two through 99. And we'll do text dollar zero people like that. Let's give that a try. Uh, it hopefully appears in the preview as well if we're lucky. There we go. I press command R so we can see it live in a simulator. And you should see, firstly, we have a new row here. Great, same number of people and four people on the right. Uh, you'll see a very faint gray uh, disclosure indicator. That's the little uh, chevron, which is iOS's way of saying uh, tapping this thing shows a new screen. Third, when you tap on this thing, it does not show a new screen. And fourth, it says four people, which is odd given that we gave, gave our number of people property a value of two. So uh, it's a little bit of two steps forward, two steps backwards. We've got a nice result, but it doesn't work properly and doesn't show the right information. We're gonna fix both of these two things. And the easiest one to start with is, why does it say four rather than two? We have a default value here of two, but it says four people. The reason for this is because our for each counts from two up to 100, creating rows for each one of these things. Two, three, four, five, six, ten 10 people and so forth. The problem is, what it means is our zeroth row, the first one it's created, contains two people because that's what we start counting from. And so when we gave number of people the value of two, we were actually setting it to be the third row. Zero, one, two, third row, which is four people, two people, three people, four people. So though it might bend your brain a little bit, the fact that our UI shows four people and not two people is not a bug. But there is still a large bug in our code. Why does tapping the thing do nothing at all? Now, if you make a picker all by itself, outside of a form, iOS will show a default sort of spinning wheel or a pop-up or some other way of letting you select these options. Here though, we've told SwiftUI this is a form for user input. And so it's automatically changed the way our UI looks. So the picker doesn't take up much space. So it works very naturally. What SwiftUI wants to do for us is, also why it's got this gray indicator, is to show a new view when it's tapped, to bring a new set of options in saying two, three, four, five, 50, 100, whatever, down the way, to bring a new view in. And to do that, we've got to add a navigation view around our form. It gives some space across the top, which is great, but also lets iOS slide in new views as needed. So directly before this form, you want to add a navigation view and place the whole form inside it. You can just select like I've done here and press command and right bracket to push it in one level, like that. Let's press command R, see how it looks now. Okay, we've got a nice big gray space at the top, that's where our navigation title will go shortly. But now this thing here will work correctly. We can now go ahead and choose 25 people, for example, and boom, it slides back to where it was, exactly as you expect. So that's a, obviously a massive improvement, and it hopefully gives you an idea of the importance of declarative user interface design. What it means is we say what we want, a picker with lots of options in a form. And it's down to SwiftUI to figure out what that actually means, how to show that. We don't say exactly 
show a, a spinning wheel or show whatever. We just say, give me a picker, whatever works best, and it'll do the right thing. And if it forms, it's that. If it's down to 50Y to show it like this way. We can override that. In fact, we will do shortly for a different kind of view, but here it'll do the right thing. And it's great because on other platforms, macOS, tvOS, watchOS, who knows, who knows what in the future, it'll do something else. It'll do the right thing based on that platform. Now, before we're done here, I want to add a title to fill the space at the top. So find your form. At the end of the form, just here, add this modifier. Dot navigation title, we split. Now it's really tempting, I know it's tempting, to think this modifier ought to go on the navigation view, because that's where the title's being shown. But it needs to be attached to the form itself, like this, not the navigation view. The reason for this is because the navigation view can show many views inside it. And the title will change over time. And so by attaching the title to the thing inside it, iOS knows, oh, a new thing's arriving with the new title, I'll replace the old one with the new one automatically for us. With that in place now, we should see a nice big title at the top saying we split, and that's much, much better, I think.